you know, when you buy a new MacBook, you kind of expect it to last a while, especially because you're forking out so much money for it. And while the reviews at the beginning are really good, usually, you don't know how the machine is gonna be after a year, after two years. There are some MacBooks around that are 10 years old and they're working fine, but do these new ones have the capability to last that long? We're yet to find out. So I've got the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, and this is what I've noticed after using it for a year. Now, recently I took a family vacation and this involved a few airplane rides here and there. And although I'm not supposed to take work with me on vacation, right? I kind of always bring my laptop with me. So I brought my MacBook Pro just out of habit. It's my daily machine. I use it all the time. However, given that I kind of tend to review MacBooks on this channel a lot, I have a few lying around. And this is an M2 MacBook Air that I've had. And after taking the MacBook Pro on this last trip, I really thought about it. And I thought, why don't I bring my MacBook Air with me? And this is for a couple of reasons. I'll get into that momentarily. I'll also tell you some more about uh, what I think of the MacBook Pro now, a year later, some of the downsides. But since everybody kind of uses their machine a little bit differently, I wanted to tell you about how I've been using my machine and what I've thought about it initially, what I think about it now. And I'll start out with uh, some basic stuff like visual design. So first I thought it was very ugly. Many of you disagreed. Many of you agreed. It doesn't matter at this point. At this point, I really don't care. In fact, I've gotten so used to it. This is the way I think of the MacBook now. The notch does not bother me at all. I don't even notice it. History. That's all I'm going to say about the visual design. And I want to be done with that subject. Now, as far as the actual design of the usable design, there is one feature that I really thought this would be the top feature and that's MagSafe. In fact, in my recent videos about the MacBook Airs, I talked about the MagSafe as being one of the top reasons to upgrade from a MacBook M1 to an M2, or if you're just looking for a new one, why you should get the M2. That was my number one reason, I think. And let me tell you, the reality is that I have hardly ever used it in the past year. Now, this is for a number of reasons. The main reason why I was excited about it is because of my previous uses of my MacBook Pros. I always had a desktop machine, that one over there, the iMac, and my MacBook Pro has always been my to-go machine. And when I was traveling with my MacBook Pro, when I had the Intel one, well, guess what? You needed to make sure you have that charger with you all the time. Can't leave home without it, or you're gonna be sorry because in about two hours, that Intel MacBook is gonna die. So it was my top priority when I got a new MacBook that it needed to charge and not use up these ports, which the older Intel MacBook had to use up one of the ports, one of the uh, USB-C ports to charge. It didn't have MagSafe. So MagSafe came along and this was a life-saving feature. All right, let's not be so dramatic, Alex, okay? Anyway, let me show you something. This thing, as you can see, it doesn't even have a cable plugged into it. This is the 140 watt power adapter that came with my MacBook Pro and it's just laying on the floor here. I can't remember the last time I used it. This thing is good as new. The MagSafe cable is down there somewhere as well. So why is this? Well, my use of the MacBook has changed dramatically. I use it now primarily on my desk. I have it plugged into a dock. The dock goes out to my monitor and the dock also powers the MacBook. So whenever I'm plugged in here, it gets fully recharged. And whenever I leave my house, I don't even have to worry about bringing the adapter. I found myself at coffee shops suddenly realizing that I've been sitting there for four hours and I look at my battery and it's only less than halfway used. A little bit of panic sets in right before that moment because I'm wondering if I brought my adapter with me and I look at the battery and I think okay I can sit here all day and not worry about the battery at all. And I want to show you the kind of stuff I typically run on my machine. So I purposely made this video during like a regular work day right. So I have all the stuff open that I typically do. Now, some of these things might not be a typical developer workflow. I do have uh, a couple of instances of VS Code open that I'm working on a couple of projects here. I have the terminal open. Let's see, I have a node server running right now, which is for some of the courses I'm working on. I also have a browser. This is Chrome, by the way, with a bunch of tabs open. This is actually not that many. I think I've cleaned it up a little bit. And I have another instance of uh, Chrome running for some other experimental stuff. I don't know why I don't use bookmarks more often. And I should do that. I also have Todoist, which is an app I use to keep track of my to-do list. I have uh, Notion running. I think both of those might be Electron apps underneath the hood, but I'm not sure. Now, the really nasty ones as far as consumption of resources are Adobe products. So I do have Photoshop. I use this program pretty much daily, not only for 
for creepy thumbnails like this one. What do you think of this one, by the way? It's coming up shortly. This is a, a weird one. I know you might have already seen this come out on the channel. Then I have Premiere Pro, which is uh, video editing. So I do that as well, of course, as you uh, obviously know. And once in a while, I have Xcode running. Once in a while, I have Android Studio running, MySQL Workbench, and so on, but not all the time. Now, I also have Dropbox and all kinds of other things running in the background. If you look at my activity monitor, out of the 64 gigabytes of physical memory, I'm using 38 of them. I like the fact that I'm using zero swap, so that's good. So that's how I've typically used my laptop, and it has given me absolutely zero problems in the last year. So performance-wise, really good. I'll get a little bit more into compatibility and why I still don't use this laptop for all my workflows. More on that in just a moment. So getting back to the battery conversation, zero concern about that whenever I take this out. However, I did notice something really wacky. If I go to about this Mac and then system report, if I go to power here, now this reports the health information of the battery and the cycle count is at 85, which is pretty good. It's decent for a year's worth of use. However, the maximum capacity is at 87%. And after one year of use, that seems a little low to me. Now, I'm not 100% sure why it went down to 87%, but it makes me feel a little bit uneasy about that. After one year, it's at 87%. What's going to happen after five years? Whenever I look at the battery status here, it's showing me that it's on power adapter, 100% charged. Now, I thought that it was supposed to be only up to 80% charged if you're keeping it plugged in most of the time. So I don't know what's going on with the regulation there, but 87% of maximum capacity is making me a little bit uneasy. Now about that travel that I was talking about at the beginning of the video, when you've got your kids' backpacks, your own backpacks, and a five pound machine, you're starting to feel it, especially with the accessories that you bring, because on a trip, you do have to bring the power brick. So at that point, I was already on the plane, but it was too late when I considered bringing this one along on my next trip. The MacBook Air is, you know, a substantial weight, but it's not nearly as heavy as the MacBook Pro. And because I spent all my money on the MacBook Pro, now I had to fly economy. I'm just kidding. I always fly economy anyway. But in the economy, you have very limited space for your seat. So when you put that tray table down and you put your laptop on it, you're pretty much sitting there like this trying to type and it's not a very comfortable thing especially when the person in front of you leans their seat back that's another good case for a machine that's smaller like the macbook air so now we get to compatibility and initially when max came out with apple silicon there were very few programs that were compatible and that's why rosetta was created to translate the x64 programs into arm and it did a really good job hardly noticeable at times but still whenever i compared the arm versions of software with their x64 equivalents the arm versions were always more performant and faster and of course probably have an effect on battery too. So it's been pretty much two years now since Apple Silicon came out and most of the software that I've been using is already converted. Of course, we looked at does it arm and you can check that out too. If you're still curious about that, you can see that there's software that's listed here and only 2.5% of the listed software is not supported. A lot of these games are not supported, which are probably going to be some of the last ones. What? Adobe Media Encoder is listed as... Rosetta? I don't think so. Maybe this is outdated. Anyway, keep an eye on DoesItArm.com for updates, but uh, most of the developer-focused software that I use is already natively in ARM. And I've already had videos covering what I use and what software is compatible and what's not. That's not the point of this video. I pretty much comfortably use this with everything being compatible. And if you take a look at my activity monitor under CPU, we have the kind here. And uh, everything is Apple except for Node. That's, that's really surprising to me because, well, <laughs> I wonder what process that is because I do have the latest versions of Node installed, which are ARM compatible. So that's a surprise to me. Apogee, that's my audio interface. No surprise there that it's not compatible. And a couple of other pieces of software, but those are not mission critical and I don't even notice that. Now, what is mission critical are some of the things that I do and I do .NET development. I still like to use Visual Studio for that. So I have to run Parallels. Parallels is a virtualization software that I run 
one on my Mac runs very smoothly because it's fully ARM compatible and it runs Windows for ARM. And now that Visual Studio is also supported for ARM, it runs very, very nicely. However, Visual Studio for ARM does not cover all the workflows that are available in Visual Studio proper, which is why I still have to use a dedicated Windows machine. Another thing I've had problems with is one of my websites, or I think two of my websites run on Gatsby. And Gatsby had a dependency on a library called Sharp, and that library was not compatible with Apple Silicon. It was not ARM compatible, so it needed to be built. There was a whole hassle about it. It works fine now, but for a while, there was a big hassle, and that kept me from moving my Gatsby workflow over to my MacBook Pro, the new one. And finally, I have a workflow that uses PyTorch and some dependencies that rely on CUDA, which is NVIDIA's card. So I have my dedicated NVIDIA machine for that purpose. And while PyTorch is supporting Apple Silicon now, not all the libraries for Python that I use run on Apple Silicon just yet. Waiting for that moment when I can run everything on Apple Silicon, but it's not quite here yet. For the most part, I'm pretty happy with the compatibility. If you're still deciding whether you should get one or not, well, we're very close to the uh, M2s maybe, uh, M2 Maxes or M2 Pros or M2 Ultras, I don't know yet. So maybe hold off just a little bit to see what Apple releases, but overall I'm very happy with this machine. And I think you would be too if you got one yourself. I'll leave a link to the machine down below if I find any of them on sale. And if you're watching this video after the M2s came out, maybe these will be on even bigger sale. I'll update the description with the latest links if I find sale items. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll be back.